Hello and welcome back to Speed Model. It's finally time to continue modeling the rooms in the office and today we're going to be moving on to the conference room. This episode as well as future episodes are going to be shorter mainly because, well, we don't have much more to do on Monday other than Speed Model. So with that said, let us jump right in. It's finally time to start work on the conference room. Just to make life a little easier for me, I moved the lights out of the way so I had a clear space to work it. I also noticed and fixed a hole in the wall before beginning. Then I line up a whole bunch of seated scale figures. We can create a long table around these people. To do that, I start with a cube and flatten it out to create the surface of the table, beveling it slightly to give it a more rounded edge. Then I slice up the table along the center and at the sides, extruding those areas down to form the legs of the table. I proceed to grab a chair from the cubicle room and line them up by the table, arranging them in a realistic used pattern. Then I took another look and realized that I'd only copied the backrest of the chair. So undoing that mistake and redoing it correctly this time, I achieve a nice spread of chairs across the room. It is actually quite packed, but I think we can make do. I proceed to texture up the table, focusing on each major surface separately, since that seems to work better. With that done, I start work on a little projector screen, starting from the roll at the top which I built with a low poly cylinder. Those always seem to be in this sort of extruded hexagon shape. I tweak it to make sure it stays under the ceiling, before moving on to create a plane which will form the main part of the screen. I position, rotate and scale it to get it to fit just nice. I move the top part of the wall a little before duplicating the top down to create the bottom bar of the screen. I decide to build little brackets that attach the top bar to the wall as well. I half the mesh and use a mirror modifier to achieve the effect. After ensuring that the two halves join in the middle, I begin to extrude the part of the upper bar, shaping it so it looks vaguely like a wall mount and attaching it to the wall. Then I turn my attention to the lower bar. These normally have some sort of a curved handle on which a rope is attached. I begin to build the curved handle using the good old extrude and rotate. A mirror modifier keeps both these parts equal and allowing them to join at the center. Next up is to design the rope. I wanted to try something fanciful, so I used an array modifier with a rotated empty to create a very detailed looking rope. After spending some time to get the look right, I realized that this has added a lot of geometric complexity to the seat, so unfortunately despite its good looks, it had to go. In its place, I create a simple torus and cylinder combination, which appears like a rope wound around the handle. With that done, I turn my attention to creating a projector. I begin by extruding a cylinder which will form the base of the projector. Then I create a cube for the projector's body, scaling it nicely and beveling it up so it fits. After some minor tweaks to the mesh, I add a cylinder at the front of the projector for its lens. Once again, I scale it so it fits nicely, giving the front an additional extrusion so it has a concave shape. Zooming out, I realized that the scale of the projector was a little off, so I quickly fixed that. At the same time, I give it a bit of a downward slant and extend the connector a little, since it does need to point down at the screen. I proceed to colour and name everything correctly, just so things are more organised. While I wanted to give the top bar of the screen a yellowish colour, it just didn't fit right, and I eventually changed it to dark grey. I decided to give the projector itself an anisotropically shaded colour, which will come out with a brushed aluminum kind of sheen. As for the lens itself, clearly that needs a texture. I find myself a picture of a camera lens, yeah that's not exactly right but it'll work for this. Unfortunately, the automatic UVs were completely off, so I spent some time to tweak it up. However, after a test render, I realized that the geometry didn't feel quite right, so I had to go through the process of redoing the UVs, this time on somewhat more complex geometry. Once that's done, there's a lot more depth to the lens. I create an additional circle on top of the lens and make it transparent, so that the specular reflections will appear correctly. Back in GIMP, I decided to create a sort of control panel, like you'd often see at the bottom of ceiling mounted projectors. 
I create some very simple buttons starting with a power button with LED. Everything else is just arrow keys, an OK and a cancel. They'll do nicely, it's not meant to be stared at very closely after all. In Blender, I divide up the projector mesh to include the button panel. All it takes is a simple UV operation to get it right. Then from the cubicle room, I copy a computer over, finding a screenshot for projection. Since I wanted the projection to actually work, I set up a spotlight, intending to texture it with the projected image. I had quite a lot of trouble here as the light wasn't quite behaving the way I expected. I'm gonna blaze through a lot of the trial and error that happened here, I just had to set the light to work in view space and everything would work correctly. After a quick test render off screen, I decided that the lights of the room needed to be switched off, so I spent some time to tweak up the materials for the ceiling lights. Since we never actually added blender lights to the scene, the darkness of the room is normal and something we don't have to fix given the context. And there you have it, that is our conference room fully functional equipped with a projector. So that's basically it for today, next time we'll move on to the bathroom, I realized that there is something that's a little bit weird about that so we're gonna have to fix that next episode. Once we're done with that, we're basically done with the entire project. So yeah, I hope you're looking forward to the conclusion of this project as much as I am. But that's it for today, thank you very much for watching and until next time, you're watching 0612TV. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, consider checking out the rest of my work on my channel. Alternatively, you may be interested in the last season of Speed Model. If you'd like to show me some monetary support, I am on Patreon. You can find a link to my campaign in the video description. Of course, you can simply like this video or leave a comment. I'll be sure to respond as soon as I can. To keep in touch with my future uploads, do subscribe to this channel. And for even more updates, check out the official Twitter account for this channel at 0612TV. Thank you for your support.